Welcome, friends. It is I, Heroes Last Scarf, and it's time for the Overwatch Hero Guide 2, Reinhardt. He is our second hero guide because he is the team player. Reinhardt is the king of the objective. He is able to just do so much work with the objective, doing work to get to there, to defend it, to just do so much with it. He is the player to be, and he's just so good. He is very reliant on just having good team, but he can also lead his team if he needs to, and that's why he is the second guide, just because of all the team play he can do and the objective play he does, because objectives, of course, win the game. So as always, we're going to go over combat and combos with him. He has a little bit of combos to him. Mode duties with him, going over his abilities, some tips and tricks with him. And as always, Reinhardt versus everyone in the game will be a following video next week because there's just so many special interactions between him and his opponents. Who should he be fighting? Who shouldn't he be fighting? Who should be relying on his teammates to fight while he's using his shield? Stuff like that, and also things you should be watching out for. We've talked about in this video and in that video. So let's get going. So who is Reinhardt? Reinhardt of the House Wilhelm, probably the seventh of his name, co-founder of Overwatch, Breaker of Omnix, the Dragon Slayer, fan of the Hoth, Payload Rider, potentially related to the Screamer, Hammer of Justice, and King of Objectives. Reinhardt was Germany's greatest soldier. He joined in the original Overwatch team that defeated the Omnix and eventually co-founded Overwatch. He was their loudest supporter and harshest critic, forced to retire because of his age, but returned to fighting after the fall of Overwatch. So Reinhardt is a team player. He's the king of the objectives. On offense, his job is to help his team get to the objective or to push the payload. And on defense, his job is to protect the point and slow down the payload. He's capable of helping his team hold positions for minutes and wiping out enemy teams with strong support. You can never go wrong with having at least one Reinhardt on your team. Reinhardt's Abilities So first up, you gotta talk about his weapon. That is the Rocket Hammer. It does 75 damage per swing. It has a wide arc to it and it knocks around enemies hit by it, so you gotta pay attention to where you hit them if you want to hit them again. Then there's Reinhardt's Barrier Field. This is a large 2000 HP shield, nearly all attacks are blocked by it, and it regenerates 225 HP per second when not being used for 2 seconds. It has a 5 second cooldown on it when it's destroyed, so you do not want it to get destroyed or else it's gonna feel like forever waiting for it to come back. One thing to note is, if an enemy walks up close to Reinhardt, they can actually shoot past the shield. This is something you gotta keep in mind as to why some enemies might be running up on you because if they got like a shotgun or some other kind of damage that hurts really bad up close, they're gonna walk up to you to do it. So you might want to put down your shield and beat them up because of that. So Reinhardt's left shift ability is called Charge, and this is a dash forward for 55 meters. This goes quite a bit of distance here. And if he hits anyone but doesn't pin them, he does 50 damage to them. And if he pins someone, he's gotta get them into a wall to do 300 damage to them. If he does not get them to a wall, they don't take any damage, and that's not so great. But if you hit them into a wall, 300 damage. This will kill everyone except tanks and anyone who might have Torbjorn's army, it might be enough to save them. The lower HP people, it will not save them because you do 300 damage. Bastion actually takes 295 damage because of his armor, so you have to slap him one time after to kill him. You can go a little left to right when you're charging as well, and charge can be interrupted. Reinhardt's E ability is called Fire Strike, and this is a ranged attack that does 100 damage and it penetrates all enemies and shields. It only stops when it hits a hard surface like a car or a wall, or if it gets bounced back by Genji, which could do damage to your team, or gets eaten by D.Va's Defense Matrix. And lastly is Reinhardt's ultimate, Earth Shatter. This is a cone attack in front of Reinhardt that deals 50 damage and stuns all enemies hit by 2.5 seconds. Useful for stopping a push or a big ultimate, and for setting up team kills. It cannot go through shields though, so be careful when you're fighting Winston or Reinhardt, because it won't go through and then you'll just be wasting your ultimate. Combos and Combat so for Reinhardt, there are kind of two combos for Reinhardt, and I'll say one is this, and that is a charge combo. You charge your enemy, you hit them into a wall, that's 300 damage. If they're still alive, hit them with the fire strike, that's another 100 damage. Then hit them with the hammers to finish them off. So let's say you only do one of each, so then you charge them for 300, add on top of that 100 from the fire strike, and then 75 from your hammer strike, so that is 475 damage altogether. That will kill most enemies in the game, except for tanks. You want to hit them a couple more times if they're tanks, and then they're dead. So that's how you could kill... Most enemies in the game one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, when you do a charge, you might get yourself open to other enemies, so be careful what you do with that. Now, the second combo requires some thought. That is, after you use your Earth Shatter to start the combo because you're hitting like a group of enemies, or maybe you're stopping ultimate and maybe only stop one enemy or maybe two enemies, the decision is what you do after that. Do you hit them with a Fire Strike? Because if you do the Fire Strike, you can hit multiple targets with it. That's 100 damage to everybody besides the 50 from the start of that attack. And then maybe you just hammer them on the ground to do some more damage. You might kill the low HP people, the heavier people you might not kill at all, but you could be doing some good damage. But once they get up, you're going to be in trouble. Or you could decide to fire strike after your Earth Shatter to hit a bunch of them and then charge a high priority target 
that would be maybe like a Mercy or a Lucio, like a healer, get rid of them. Or maybe an enemy you feel might have an ultimate soon, that could be a big problem. Or maybe they're a tank, like go after Winston or Reinhardt if you think you can kill them after your ultimate, that is something you consider as well. And there's no like healers to take out, because usually you want to get rid of the healers, that's a big thing for your team. But it's really dependent on, do you think you can kill a bunch of them using your Fire Strike and your Hammers? Or do you think you should just go for straight for the charge, do the Fire Strike then the charge? That's really what you gotta think about is, how many combinations of attacks do I want to do? Because you only have 2.5 seconds before they get up and ruin any chance you have of killing a bunch of them. Now when it comes to combat, usually what you're doing is you have your shield out to protect your allies as you're pushing towards an objective, or you're sitting on the objective, protecting your allies as they pelt the enemy with shots. That's usually what you do. But if an enemy comes close enough and you have to drop the shield, or your shield's getting broken so you have to get into combat, usually you want to just open up with your hammer to swing them away, to knock them away if they're too close. Or if they're a marginal distance away, you could go for the fire strike. Or maybe you'll go for the charge right away to go for a kill. If you can predict the enemy movement, you can go for that. Something important is corridors are your friends. If there's a corridor and the enemy's just going straight through that, fire strike through that just hit everybody with a lot of damage there. Or you could charge right through. You can charge and hit one of them, knock the other ones around, and then you just kill somebody hopefully at the end of that corridor. That'd be really good damage. Of course, you'll get converged on, but if you have allies with you, your allies can go ahead and attack them as they turn to attack you. That'd be very useful. One thing to note, though, is if you feel like there's not a real good fight when your shield's about to be broken, then go ahead and fall back and then just regenerate that shield and then go back to blocking for your teammate. You don't always have to go into the fight. Sometimes it's better to retreat than to go forward, because if you go forward and get killed, then there's no shield at all to help anybody for the next couple seconds. One last thing to note is you are a great team player. Just put your shield in front of Bastion or Torgren's turret or in front of a sniper and just watch as they kill people as you're just blocking anything trying to kill them. It is glorious. Mode duties. Now we're going to talk about capture point, payload, and hybrid first, and then we'll talk about control after because control, of course, you're doing offense and defense at the same time, so it's a little different but mostly the same. First off, let's talk about offense in all modes. So Reinhardt, you're pushing forward with your team, you have your shield out, the enemy's beating up your shield, and you gotta rely on your allies to kill the enemy as they're shooting at you, so hopefully you don't lose your shield too fast, because once that shield's gone, your teammates are gonna get beat up on. Now once your shield is close to being broken, you don't want to let it get broken, because if it gets broken, it will take 5 seconds to come back, and that's gonna feel like forever. You let go of that shield, and you either fall back so you can shield regenerate, or you can go forward and go into the fight. It really depends on how close the enemy is, and how the situation looks to you, and that should lead to your decision to either fight or flight. Now whether you go into combat or whether you hang back, it takes 2 seconds before it starts regenerating and it should only take about 8-9 seconds for it to fully regenerate because it goes for 225 regeneration per second, so that's about 8-9 to nine seconds to regenerate the full 2000. Now of course in capture and hybrid you're trying to push to point A, so you're just pushing your team to point A and once you get on it you're protecting your team as they're fighting or you're engaging in combat to kill the enemy so you can capture that point depending on how the competition is going. Now once you capture point A, and capture of course you're going to go to point B, do the same kind of thing, you just want to get control of that point and win it. Now in hybrid of course, you're doing payload, and your main function is doing that, taking points or sitting on the payload. Now when it comes to payload, you're the payload rider, that is your job. You sit there, you put your shield out, and you protect your teammates as the payload gets attacked, and that's really what you do. You can leave the payload only if the enemy is trying to contest your payload, or if the situation looks dire where you need to help your teammates out because if they get killed, then you're going to get killed after them and then, well, there's no more payload pushing. So that's really the only reason why you would leave the payload to save your teammates or kill enemies so that your payload can continue pushing forward. While you're sitting on the payload, you want to use your fire strike often, try to get hits on enemies so you can build up your ultimate because when your ultimate's built up, if they go for a big push, you can stop it with your earth shatter, which would be huge for your team. But there is one occasion where you might want to save your fire strike and that is if Junkrat is on the other team. Junkrat's ultimate, the Rip Tire, can be destroyed by Fire Strike, and that tire is strong enough to kill you, so it is worth considering. Now, when it comes to the defensive side of things, you're sitting either at choke points or at spots where you can protect a sniper or bastion or a turret. That's really the main thing you're doing, or you can go in and be a brawler if you got the right support for it. But mainly what you're doing is you're sitting at a choke point with your shield out, your allies are shooting from behind you, you're blocking damage coming in, and just holding the enemy as long as you can. You're holding the main road from the enemy. You can still get flanked, but at least you're holding the main road. It's up to your teammates to stop the flanking stuff. Now if the choke point gets overtaken, you're usually falling back to either protect from the point, or somewhere off the point protecting snipers, or other gunners, or bastion, or turrets. Just protecting the allies while they're shooting back at the enemy to kill them before they can get to the point. And if you can push them back far enough, you can go back and reestablish the choke point. Just like in offense, you're saving your Earth Shatter to either stop a big push, or you're stopping a big ultimate, or you're setting up your team with a big ultimate so that they can do a lot of damage and kill a bunch of people. That's really what you're doing it for. 
Now when it comes to payload, you're pushing forward with your team towards the enemy while they're on the payload and you want to be able to contest. You want to be able to get in range of it where it's not pushing anymore and you're blocking for your teammates while they're just pelting the enemy on the payload and trying to kill them and just keep that payload from moving forward. Here's a big thing to think about and that is Earth Shatter will go through the payload. You can hit enemies behind the payload with it, on top of the payload. Everyone will be hit around the payload with your ultimate as long as they don't have shields protecting them. And that is big to know. Now the real difference between control and the other modes is what does your team do before the point gets activated? And there's two options here. One is you either hold the point and then just take it once it becomes activated or you kill your enemies and then take the point. Those are really the two options that happen in control. And when you're Reinhardt, you really prefer the first one because, well, you got a shield. So if your team goes for the first option, you go over to the point with them, you hold it and you kill the enemies as they come in. That'd be great. Now you got the point. Now, the other way is, of course, attacking the enemy team. And you kind of want to use charge to get ahead of them or something because you want to get your shield in front of your team and protect them as you do fighting and then go for the point. Now, what happens next really depends on whether you get the point or not. If you get the point, then you're playing like a defensive Reinhardt. And if you don't get the point, you're playing like an offensive Reinhardt. That's really just the difference there. And it's just the fluidity of going between those two different forms, depending on who's got the objective at the time. Tips and tricks with Reinhardt. Now, there are a ton of interactions between Reinhardt and other heroes in this game when it comes to different powers happening. And we're going to mention some of them here, but the more specific ones we'll mention in Reinhardt vs. Overwatch, the following video after this one coming up next week. So let's go over these. First one, Shield cannot block Melee, Reinhardt's Fire Strike, Winston's Tesla Cannon, and Symmetra's Ball. Everything else can be blocked by the Shield. Those are the only things you gotta watch out for. This next tip is just reiterating, don't let your shield get destroyed. Five second cooldown on your shield will feel like forever. It is not fun. Next tip is that sometimes it's worth charging someone off the map. This is a sacrificial move because you'll get yourself killed doing it, but sometimes it's worth doing. Like say Winston does his ultimate. You catch him with that, you push him off, you're both dead, but at least he's not hitting your teammates with his ultimate. Maybe Reaper's doing the Death Blossom and your only option is to push him and there's no wall to push him into. So sacrificing yourself to stop that big ultimate. And another one is Diva's Mech Explosion. You can push that off. You can save your teammates with that. But something else worth noting when it comes to charge is that you can push someone off the map and not die with them. Because you have a 55 meter push, there are certain areas in the map where you can dash out, push the enemy off the map, and not go with them. But it is only certain areas, and you really gotta know those spots. Another thing worth noting about Diva's Mech Explosion, since I just mentioned it, you can block with your shield. It will not destroy your shield unless it's low enough, and you can protect teammates behind you with the shield as well. It really depends what's happening. Sometimes maybe the mech is just in a spot where it'll kill a bunch of your teammates and you can't block them with shield, so you gotta sacrifice yourself to save the day. Just full on pulling off an Iron Giant. Now a couple more specific tips that we'll go over these in more detail with the other guide, and that is two Reinhardts and they charge each other, they get stunned. Another is you can protect teammates from high noon. He puts up his high noon, you put your shield in the way. Even if it shows skulls on your teammates for his attack, it will not go through your shield. It will not kill them, they'll be protected. Another thing to point out is Lucio can go into your shield and push you back or go to your side and push you whatever direction he wants. So you got to keep that in mind when dealing with Lucio. And another one is Junkrat's Rip Tire. That does enough damage to kill you and it can go through your shield to hit you. So you want to make sure you hit it with Fire Strike because that can kill it. And one big general tip to mention is that your shield is just great at blocking a lot of ultimates. It can't block every single ultimate, but it can block most of them, and it can protect your teammates. But eventually your shield can get destroyed by some of the bigger ultimates, like the Rocket Barrage from Fair will eventually break through. Just the bigger attacks will eventually get through, but some of the smaller damaging ones will not get through. That's just a useful thing to keep in mind, and you want to get in the way of those. And the last tip to give is the three ultimates that can get through your shield. That would be Maze Blizzard Ultimate, and Genji's Ultimate because it's a melee, and Hanzo's Dragons. If you hear angry Japanese, get the hell out of there. In conclusion, Reinhardt is the team player. He is protecting his teammates while they're trying to kill enemies, while they're getting attacked by the enemies. He's all about protecting people. He's protecting the point, protecting the objective, protecting the payload. He protects all the things, and he does it with the help of his teammates because he can't kill while he's protecting. He is capable of dealing a lot of damage and killing a lot of the roster of the game, but that is not his main function. That is his last resort. You are protecting your teammates with your shield and going for combat second. Shield first, combat second, keep your team alive, win the game. That is what you do, and he does it very well. That is why he's the king of the objectives, and that is why he's the second guide we've done as far as the heroes go. Now the next guide is of course going to be Reinhardt vs Overwatch, and that is how he fights all 22 heroes in this game. We're going to include Anna in there for sure. That'll be worth noting. How does he interact with her? Should he be fighting her? Should he be avoiding her? And same for the other heroes in the list. As always, you should subscribe because we have gameplay videos nearly every day so you can see how we succeed and fail so you can learn from that. And of course, 
there will be more guides coming out in the future. After Reinhardt, we're going to go ahead and do a support or an offense hero, and then after that will be the other role. My plan is to just do one of each role and then go back and do one of each role again. That way we just have a good mix of different heroes you learn about. And that should be everything as far as this guide goes. I had fun making it, I hope you had fun watching and learning from it. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.